What's the worst crime you ever committed before you turn 10? This kid Ricky stole my Orlando magic beanie and denied it to the teacher. One week later he brought his dad's portable black and white TV not much bigger than a Game Boy with a big antenna. I took it out of his bag when he wasn't looking and stashed it. He immediately blamed me but couldn't tell the teacher because I guess we weren't allowed to have TVs. So he just sucked it up thinking I would give it back at the end of the day. I remember watching that show Gargoyles in my room late that night on my new portable TV. Laughing quietly at the beating he probably took from his dad for losing his TV. If you are reading this Ricky. I'm not sorry. Hit a kid with my sister's pogo stick. This was mid 80s. And he was the kid on the street who thought he could bully everyone. But then ran to his mum crying if anyone dared stand up to him. After a full day of his shit. I finally snapped. Went to our garage and got the pogo stick. Then I walked. With purpose. And a pogo stick over my shoulder. To his house. Into the garden. And twatted him with it as hard as I could. He screamed and went down. While I calmly walked away and put the pogo stick away. I became a bit of a social pariah in the neighborhood after that. But that little shit never bothered me again. Not a crime but I was in year 1 at school. And being little shits. We were messing around and making a lot of noise in the lunch hall. When we were told calm down by the teacher. We all accepted it. But there was always that one kid who said yeah. You're not allowed to talk in here. For some reason that pissed us off more than anything so I take it upon myself to stand up walk past this guy and then without thinking say to the teacher, name, made fun of my skin. As far as I knew it. I was one of three non-white in that school. He got suspended for three days. I was a little shit. There was this family that lived next to my grandparents. And they moved but I guess had a small car so they would leave bags outside of the house. Pick some up and come back. Well there was a black bag full of toys and I took it before they had a chance to come back for it. I stole $500 and a chapstick from my dad's wallet and put it into my Darth Vader piggy bank and he figured it out pretty quickly when he noticed the chapstick on the floor of my room. Upon looking in my piggy bank and finding the $5 100 bills. I told him it was from an allowance when he never gave allowance. Arson. Was playing with matches setting a newspaper on fire. It was pretty windy and the whole newspaper started blowing around. Grabbed a cardboard refrigerator box and stomped on the fire till I thought it was out. Well the box caught fire. The wind picked up the embers and sent them up into a tree. Right behind my grade school. Tree went on fire and set the next one on fire. I ran. Heard the fire engines and hid in my house for the rest of the weekend. That Monday I had to line up in the schoolyard. Stared at those two burnt out trees for almost three months before they cut them down. I stole a game of battleships from a daycare. Ship by ship and then colored peg by peg. They just thought we kept losing the pieces because we were kids. I don't know what I expected to do with all the pieces because there was no way I could steal the boards without notice. At the end. You just point out that there isn't much point to having the game boards around anymore and ask if you can have them to use as cases to keep your stuff in. You just don't tell them the stuff is the ships and pegs. To be fair. I was involved in this but it's a case of well that escalated quickly and older friends. We had a treehouse that got bulldozed during the clearing of our small forest behind our house. A new housing development was going in. We didn't know about it. And we were seriously pissed when we walked out one day to find a big ruin where our fort. Belongings. Treehouse. Toys and such used to be. We really didn't understand that our woods weren't really ours. Over the course of a weekend we exacted our revenge. 1. Comma started a fire in the cab of a dump truck using the litter in the floorboard and the dash cigarette lighter. 2. Comma put gasoline from various equipment onto the foundation cinder blocks of the new homes. Then burned them, which destroys the glow and turns the cinder blocks to powder as soon as weight goes on them. 3. Comma hotwired a very large center hinge roadscaper, lulu or something, that we then proceeded to attempt to drive. Failing horribly we bailed. Then watched in sick fascination as it slowly plummeted over the side of the artificial lake that the housing development was digging. 
there was only a few feet of water in the bottom of the newly excavated lake at the time. Orange clay sides and a muddy mess. Never got caught. I was exactly 10. But I still feel as though this fits the thread. For context. At the start of the 5th grade. I was fucking depressed. My family had just moved states and I was thousands of miles away from all the friends I'd known all my life. I was also desperate for attention. My teacher had a class blog where she'd give us bell ringers to start the day. You know what I did? I fucking made a terroristic threat. I anonymously wrote, not verbatim but this is the gist, I'm coming to school with a gun tomorrow. You'll all be sorry. This was right after the Sandy Hook shootings. So understandably everyone was fucking terrified. The police were called and I started crying and turned myself in. The aftermath was scary as fuck I don't know much about the legalities because I've never brought it up much to my parents but I know a lawyer was hired, I spoke to him, and I almost went to state juvenile court before the whole case was dropped. Probably because it was ridiculous. The only good thing that came out of all this was that I got the therapy that I needed but man. That shit was stressful on a 10 year old and probably even more stressful on my parents. TL. DR. 5th grade me threatened to shoot up the school. When I was 8. I had just gotten a new BMX bike. A shiny new Haro. And at the time. All the boys on my block were obsessed with riding bikes. We would take our bikes down to the railroad tracks by my house. And jump small ramps. One day. Some boys decided to try and take my bike. They pushed me off of my bike. And tried taking it. Being sort of small at the time. I kind of just let them do it. One of their parents showed up. And made the boy give me my bike back. Decidedly sick of their shit. I went home and grabbed my dad's pocket knife. I rode my bike around the tracks for about an hour. Waiting for one of the boys to mess with me. They didn't. And I got impatient. So I started ramping the bigger jumps. That's when the oldest boy. Around 11 at the time spoke up nice bike punk he said riding up to the ramp what i did next i still remember vividly riding away from the ramp i jumped off my bike ran to him and stabbed him in the arm he started to scream for his mom and i quickly ran home my dad got a call from his mom later she wasn't mad because he had provoked it but I still feel awful about the bandages he had to wear for the next two weeks. Don't know if this counts. But I was playing around in the yard of the recently vacated rental house next door when I was 8-9 yo and I found a ziplock bag stuffed completely full of weed. Like. I'm amazed that this bag was able to close. Definitely more than an ounce. Anyway. Having recently gone through the D. A. R. E classes. I immediately run home and bring it to my mom. She takes it from me and tells me that I did the right thing and asks me to please not tell anyone about this. It will be our secret. So that's what I did. I asked her about it on a few occasions recently and every time I broach the subject she tells me that she can't remember what she did with it. Okay. Mom. TL. Doctor I was an accomplice in a drug heist with my mom when I was 8 yo. Vandalized somebody's house. This kid who lived next to me used to bully me. Let's call him Tony. I was really short and really chubby while he was tall and athletic. One day he shoved me up against a car and punched me in the stomach when we were walking back from the bus stop for no reason. I think our conversation just escalated and he got really mad at me for some dumb. Nine year old reason. Anyway. Later that night I snuck into my garage and grabbed a can of spray paint. Went over to his house and sprayed Tony as a bitch in huge letters on his driveway. I had probably just recently found out what that word meant and was dying to use it. My parents made me scrub it out the next day after his parents realized it was me. My sister and I thought it would be a good idea to throw small rocks and gravel at the cars driving too fast through our neighborhood one winter. The one guy who got super pissed about it was the one who was always speeding and never looking out for kids. Jokes on him because he got into a bad wreck later that winter while speeding. He lived but he was in the hospital for a while and his car was totaled. 
a mentally challenge kids magic cards. My brother had an IEP in school, individual education plan, which meant that he was always doing extra work outside of school to catch up to the rest of his class. One of these after school activities just so happened to take place at a private school for less than gifted children. Now I'm not sure of the circumstances. Maybe little Billy was being totally rambunctious and his teacher was punishing him by taking his only love. His magic cards. Away during school hours. Or maybe his teacher hung onto his cards so she could reward him for good behavior throughout the day. In either case she obviously got too comfortable and trusting with her class because she left those fuckers right on top of her desk. Face up. I looked at the top two cards and shoved them as far into my pockets as I possibly could and tried not to think of the shitstorm that would go down come morning. I'm not sure what the actual cards were but I do remember that the one on top was a 5 stroke 5 spider. And the other was a 5 stroke 7 or 7 stroke 7 basilisk looking motherfucker. Both were huge improvements to my shitterly thrown together deck. Anyways. Totally got away with it. And ripped shit at school for like a week and a half. Until my buddy went out and got blaze. I was playing at the park and heard the ice cream guy go by. So I ran over to see my younger brother with a $10 bill buying ice cream for him and our parents. I asked for ice cream too. But he said no because I wasn't home to ask for it when he got the money. I bullied him into letting me get a $3 thing anyway. Got my ice cream and ambivalently took it back with me to the park. Got in so much shit with my parents that night it was unreal. I guess I committed grand theft ice cream. I felt so bad for it that a few weeks later I hadn't saved up enough dimes. I collected found change all the time. And for some reason it was usually dimes, that I tried to set up a garage sale for some of my toys so I could pay back my dad. My mom got really mad that I would sell things they bought for me. While my dad just hugged me and forgave me because I obviously felt really bad about it. Stealing the teacher's wallet out of her purse and framing it on the class bully. I was a husky kid. One day I was talking to the girl I was crushing on in the hall as we were released for recess. The class bully walked by and said what are you talking to her for fat ass? My crush looked at him. Then looked at me. And then walked away. This injustice cannot stand. I told myself. So the next day when we were released for recess. I snuck back into our unlocked classroom. Our teacher smoked so I knew she'd be out. And took her wallet out of her purse and stuffed it into the very bottom of the bully's desk cubby. Towards the end of the day the teacher grabbed her purse and noticed it was missing her wallet. She then started rummaging through her desk drawers before finally looking at the class with a you little shits look. She told us if you give back my wallet now, you'll be in a lot less trouble than when I find it myself. Of course no one except me knew where it was so everyone kept quiet. Eventually she got upset enough to start going through our stuff. When she found her wallet in the bully's desk he started crying saying I don't know how that got in their MRS. P. I didn't take it. He was sent to the principals. Was expelled and was eventually enrolled into another elementary school. Age 6. Lived in a new development of homes. A bunch of us got into a house that had just been completed through an open door. It didn't take long before vandalism started. Breaking mirrors. Throwing rocks into walls. Etc. The builder showed up and most of us ran. But I froze and got caught. Had to go to juvenile court for it and got probation. The only good thing to come from it was my dad later telling me that he was never more simultaneously ashamed and proud of me at the same time. He was disgusted by what I did, but he was amazed that I never gave up the name of a single friend. I said I didn't know any of them. And he respected that. Not me. But my sister. I was 7 and she was 5. This was during a Canadian winter. Mom took us out for groceries. As usual. She went to the liquor store this time though. We'd been there before and she told us not to wander about. Again as usual. She bought some wine and rum or something. We get back into the car and are just about home. 15 minutes drive. And then my sister pulls this giant bottle out of her coat. Mom look what I bought you. Apostrophe. Had to explain to her that is not what buying is. 
I'm still confused how a 5 year old stole this big bottle of booze. It wasn't a cheap one. Either. It was around a $80 bottle. It was a fancy bottle that was pretty wide. I forget which brand it was though. But the liquid was caramel colored. Stopped and possibly derailed a freight train by putting stones in the rails. It all started with coins. Edit. Whole story was. Me and my friend started pressing coins on a railroad track. A couple weeks later we got bored and ran out of ideas. So we grabbed rocks. And lined them up. After a couple trains running over them with huge noises. One suddenly stopped right before the piled up stones. We ran like hell. And saw several police cars turning up in the distance. Managed to outmaneuver them and got back home. Never to do this shit again. When I was 6. I was addicted to single serve Kool-Aid packets. By addicted. I would have several a day and it was my drink for breakfast. Lunch and dinner. Ah. Kool-Aid. Anyway. One day I was at Target and my eyes saw some fruit punch packets for sale next to the register. Next to the candy bars and gum. Not knowing what sharplifting was. I slipped it into my pocket. And being greedy. Put a dozen or so on the conveyor belt. My dad. Sadly. Did not approve of this and made me put them back. I forgot about the one in my coat pocket until we were exiting the store. As we walked out. Those alarms starting flashing red and I ran. I was a good quarter of the way to the car and ready to start my fugitive life when my dad called me back. It turns out we were fine. But there was a woman who exited the store at the same time as us with unpaid Kool-Aid flavored water bottles, on the bottom of her cart. I never drank fruit punch flavored anything again. Bank fraud. One stole a check from my mother. Wrote $2000 on it from some random guy I've never met. Paid to some random guy I've never met. Biked to a nearby bank and deposited the check. I should mention the bank account was shared with my mother. The $2000 check didn't work because it wasn't deposited to the right account. I took another check. For $3000 this time. And tried again. This time to the account of I eat shit for afternoons. It worked. But it wasn't long before my mum realized that she was missing a couple thousand dollars and proceeded to angrily destroy my newfound richness place. Sigh. Ignorance of youth. Any bank that processed that check doesn't deserve to handle anyone's money. A buddy and I were at the local mall and had just finished watching a movie at the mall's second floor AMC movie theater. One way to exit was through a fairly industrial back hallway. A hallway that happened to have a large fire hose wrapped up and an enticing large water valve. We thought it would be fun to open the valve and see what happened. Well. Water came gushing out of the fire hose. Like. Well. Like water from a fire hose. We got scared and ran off. Without turning off the water. We ran out of the mall and to the bike racks to get out of the area. However. Before a minute went by. Mall fire alarms were tripping and we were too curious to leave. Before too long. A number of fire trucks pulled up. Nervous. But watching this unfold. We saw the firemen open some bottom floor doors. And basically Niagara Falls was gushing from the doorway. It was all quite exciting. A man came over at one point and asked us if we knew what happened. And to this day I think he was a plainclothes cop by the way he was trying to get information from us. I don't know the extent of the water damage. But we never confessed and never got caught. I burned down three trees in the side of a building when I was eight. I had found matches in the staircase leading down from my apartment and I was lighting the pine straw on fire with my friend Daniel. We had gotten down to the last match and we decided to let this one go for a little longer. The other ones we had stomped out after a few seconds. Anyway you know how fire works and soon it was out of control. I remember I ran home and told my mom right away what I had done. But I did lie to the police. He walked me over to his car and threatened to take me to jail before I confessed. This led to me requiring a parent to be with me and eventually my parents were evicted because they refused to pay for the damages. When I was in middle school I started an illegal business selling sweets at school. I knew it wasn't right but I didn't know it was against the law. 
I went to the shop in my village and bought a bunch of sweets that you couldn't really get anywhere else. They were dirt cheap and caked in sugar. The exact thing 9 year olds love. Then I'd get to school and sell them for 3. Sometimes 4 times the price. I made 20 pounds in a week. And I remember my parents kept asking me where I was getting all this change from. I said I found it on the school bus. Eventually I blew my cover when I tried to sell one sweet, retail price 30p, to a boy in the year below for a tenner. His mum found out and came round my house. Had a go at me and my parents. Told my mum what I was doing. Dad laughed and praised by business acumen. Mum was horrified. Made me write a letter to every kid I'd sold sweets to, that took some doing, and returned the money to school. Not me. A friend of mine from high school. He revealed to me one day that he attributed one event from his childhood that forever changed the course of his life for the worse. He was in school with his friends and they were standing at the top of a stairwell. They were all playing with matches and he ended up lighting one and throwing it down the stairs. Well. That match landed on a girl's head and her hair caught on fire. She wasn't badly hurt. But apparently there was a Michael Jackson-ish hairspray effect. And a lot of her hair went up in flames. He was expelled from the school district and sent to a school for problem children. He wasn't an animal. But he was thrown in with the worst kids in town. There was no focus on learning and pretty soon. School was not school any longer. When I knew him. He was in the technical stream in high school focusing on automotive. He simply said that every day since that day had been a struggle and he realized that the life he would have had was no longer possible. As a grown adult now. I have a hard time thinking about how down a kid could be. That he thinks it is all over from 10 years old on. Grand Theft Auto. In the second grade. Two of my friends and I decided that we didn't like homework. So we decided to talk to the president about it. Our plan was to meet at the airport the next morning to fly to Washington and chat with the president about the situation. While my mother was in the shower I took her car keys and got into the car. It was a manual and I couldn't reach the pedals anyway. So a neighbor found me in the car slightly rolled down the road. One of my friends said he tried to bike to the airport but he got tired after a block and went home. The other said he forgot about the plan altogether. Around 8 years old I was with my parents at the shops and I decided to try steal a packet of candy cigarettes. So I put them in my pocket. A kid roughly my age was right next to me and I smiled at him as if to be proud of what I just did. He then said put those back. I was shocked because I thought I was being cool and decided to just put them back before he told on me. As I pulled them out of my pocket my dad saw me and knew what I had just done. By the time we left everyone in that shop knew my name and how many times I was getting the belt on my ass when we got home. In about 5th grade. My brother found out that the school supplies cupboard in his classroom was always unlocked. So at recesses. He started sneaking in and helping himself. Started with a couple pencils and an eraser. And then progressed to him stuffing his backpack full of workbooks. Markers. Paint reams of paper and anything else that wasn't nailed down. Eventually, my mom noticed how well stocked his closet had become. And she made him bag it all up and marched him into the principal's office to return it. My brother walked in carrying two large garbage bags full of supplies. The principal's eyes bulged when he saw the scale of the theft. Then my brother turned and started to walk out of the office. The principal stopped him and said and where do you think you're going? Dot. My brother looked at him plaintively and said to get the rest of it. Principal damn near shit himself. Can't remember the exact count. But it was in the neighborhood of a dozen of the big garbage bags. He swears that on one of his trips in. He caught the principal taking a pull off a bottle in his desk drawer. Was 11 so kinda not in the zone. But it was good. I used to have a crush on a girl who would not notice me. One day I was waiting with my mum for my sister to finish her after school study session and I told my mom I forgot something in my class. So there I went. Looking for something to proclaim my love and finding nothing. Mind you I was 11 and love meant causing mild discomfort. So here I am looking left right and center. I found nothing and proceeded to take a huge shit on her chair and cover it with papers. 
Next day we came to class and I noticed my mistake. For some reason I thought I hid the shit pretty good. Turns out I did not notice the pile of shit smelling like death had in fact overpowered the papers and the wet stuff went through them and thus shit looked like shit. No one knew who it was. They got her a new chair. And I never got caught. When I was in first grade I went to a Christian school that was connected to my church. Well. I developed a obsession with sticky tack. For whatever reason. And every time the teacher had us line up for a bathroom break I would lean up against the posters on the wall. Reach behind and grab as much sticky tack as I could without the poster falling off. I vaguely remember one of them falling off during class and the teacher mumbling about how she couldn't figure out where the sticky tack was going. Well one night after church I convinced my best friend to help me steal more. I bribed him to be exact. I bribed him with a genuine. One of a kind. Very sought after. Recently discovered rock. It was literally a little black rock I found on my school's playground. Well. Long story short. We got caught in the classroom. And he was the one that had to buy more sticky tack for my teacher. I felt bad for a while until he was no longer mad at me. After which I have always thought it was hilarious. Oh and hey I'm still friends with the guy. I had a teacher MRS. Alan. Myself and two of my friends found out she was allergic to perfume and poured it all over her classroom and she went into anaphylactic shock. She made my life a living hell and deserved it. Before I did it. She pulled me out of class and told me she doesn't like me and accused me of cheating on my test. I studied all weekend for that test and got a really good mark. She would never help me with anything. I would have my hand up for the entire duration of the class and she would ignore me. She would call my house and tell my mom I was disrupting other students and tell her I need to see a psychiatrist to see if I have a mental issue. I would only disturb the students to ask if they could explain it to me. In the end I was too young to be charged. She never admitted to anything she did to me. I got kicked out of school and my three friends passed over all the blame. If you're reading this MRS. Alan I fucking hate you and hope your life sucks. I stood at the end of my driveway giving the middle finger to every car that drove by because I saw a kid do it in my first grade class when the teacher was writing on the board and he was flipping her off when she had her back turned. Some kids laughed and I didn't know what it meant. So naturally I started doing it to cars driving by until one stopped. I ran away and hid in the garage while he told my mom. Later that week my dad brought it up while we were peeing next to each other at urinals out at a restaurant somewhere. He said I should probably not do that anymore. Assault with bubble solution. When I was growing up. It was all boys on my street except for myself and a girl about 7 houses down. She was a total spoiled brat, she would always invite me over to play. But then wouldn't let me actually touch any of the toys I wanted to play with. As soon as I touched something. She'd say no. I'm playing with that. It's mine. I was pretty timid as a kid. So I tolerated it. Well. One day when I was probably 8 and she was 7. I was playing with her and it was more of the same. I'd finally had enough of her shit. So I snapped and grabbed an open bottle of bubble solution. Quickly splashing the entire bottle on her. She started screaming and crying in the middle of the road because it got in her eyes. I freaked out and ran to my grandma's and hid. Shortly thereafter. Some repair guy showed up at my grandma's to fix her cable or whatever and casually mentioned man. There's a little girl down the street just screaming bloody murder. And my grandma gave me a look. Since she and I were the only girls on the street. My grandma immediately knew who it was and knew that I was likely involved. But my grandma never said anything else about it. Because she's old school and she didn't give a shit if I was beating up that bratty little girl because she had it coming. I then proceeded to avoid the girl for the rest of my life. When I was about 6 my brother. Friend. And I had this 5 gallon water jug. And for some reason we decided it'd be fun to fill it with the nastiest concoction possible. So we all took turns peeing in it. Put in some dirt. Dog poop. And even a few dead flies for good measure. There was a house nearby where the people who owned it had yelled at us on a few occasions for playing by their backyard. So we thought it'd be funny to tip this jug over their fence. 
So over it went and a lot of that disgusting slime went into their swimming pool. So long story short. The cops were called and we got a stern talking to. At 7 or 8 I would shoplift from toy stores. I got caught once and attempted to run out of the store. But was caught by some woman. She got in my path and blocked me. This guy processed me in the back. Taking my name and address. Got my mother to come down. My father beat me mercilessly that night. I used to also steal from my parents at every chance I had. No amount of talking to beating ZTC sunk in. Of course my parents never investigated the root cause. They just yelled and beat. Years later in my teens I was arrested numerous times for grand larceny and even felony for securities fraud. Haven't stolen anything in 20 years now. It's one of the few things I changed about myself for the positive, stopping being a thief. When I was 9 we always played football at recess. Sometimes this one fat kid would join us and he'd always block me even though he was on my team. I asked him why and he said so you'll pass to me. So in the middle of a game I got fed up and pushed him a bit. He then pushed me back and called me gay. Which was a breaking point for little army and I pushed him to the ground and started wailing on him until I found a rock and threw at his face while still on top of him. After looking back at what I had done. Noticing that his face was all cut up and his eye was bleeding. I then proceeded to vomit. All over his face. And into his mouth. Which was how I won my first fight. I even came home and showboated to my dad that I beat a kid up. He patted me on the back and gave me a sip of beer. Well this will probably remain buried. But when I was in the 5th grade I had a cut on my middle finger. Well one day I was sitting in class inspecting my wound and thinking that it looked quite gnarly. Everyone is going to think I'm a badass. I look up from my finger to see a girl across the classroom with a horrified look on her face. I figured she was shocked by the brutal wound on my finger so I waved my finger at her and said yeah. Look at that. It was only about 30 seconds later that I realized I was only holding up my middle finger and that she was horrified that I had so flagrantly flipped her off in the middle of class. I was never punished. But boy did I feel bad. TL. Doctor excitedly flipped off a fellow classmate. 